Split shot. And then I'll let you go. I give you lots of work time, so you owe me a little learning time here. So I should hear it. Click, 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 click. Where are those? I gotta hear those things closing up. Click, click and shut. I know, I know. Give me two more. Okay. All right. Am I recording? Yes, I am. Okay. So let, let's do, let's, this is the last projectile motion problem I plan on doing. I think this is all, we did one yesterday that was a little bit easier, or the day before. And then I want to do one that's a little bit tougher. This is a little tougher because this time, this is actually pretty tricky in a way, because this time they're wanting us to calculate an angle at which this thing is being shot, so all this stuff happens. Okay, this is pretty, this, this is pretty tricky, pretty crafty question, I thought. So, I do say so. so. So yeah, so the picture that we would draw, and it's, I think it's useful to have a picture. This is another one of those cliff pictures, right? So we're doing that kind of a thing, right? And we're going to launch this projectile at an angle relative to, what are we trying to find? Uh, launch angle relative to the horizontal. So this, so relative to the horizontal, we're going to launch this thing with some initial velocity vector like that, call that theta, right? And so then what's the projectile going to do? Well, if we launch it at that angle, it's going to do something like that, right? Everybody agree? Okay. And what's the stuff that we know? Well, they tell us that the cliff is 60.9 meters. They tell us that the initial velocity, initial speed, not the velocity, right? Because we need a direction. That's what we're trying to find. The initial speed is 20.2 meters per second, so all standard units. They give us the mass of the scale. Does that matter? No, no. no, doesn't matter at all. And they tell us the time. They tell us that this thing takes to get to the ground, it takes 5.60 seconds. Okay? And we got to use that information to calculate an angle, right? Okay, so we got to break this into horizontal and vertical stuff, right? We're going to make a horizontal column and a vertical column. The vertical column is usually, well, that's going to be the one where more stuff is happening, right? Because things, stuff's being accelerated. So we got vertical motion, we've got horizontal motion, motion. What do we know? What can you tell me here about vertical? Okay, good. So we know acceleration. So A sub Y is what? Negative 9.80 standard units. We'll just suppress all the units, right? Uh, what else? Also, in line would be a 20.2 sine theta. Okay, so we'll get to that in a sec. So we, we can we can write in terms of theta. We could write an initial velocity. Okay. There's one other thing we know just numerically though. What's that? Displacement. Good. So delta y is what? Okay, be careful now. Negative 60.9. Okay? And then how about if we take our initial velocity vector, so let, let's, let's just take this part right here. I'm going to focus in on this stuff. Okay? Let's go down a little bit and let's redraw that. So we've got this. There's my horizontal and here's my... Kind of trickster guru. Messing with me. 20.2 is the length of the velocity vector, and we're calling this theta, right? So we don't. We're trying to find theta. We don't know that. But in terms of theta, we could write this as components. We could write a horizontal component and a vertical component of the velocity, right? The horizontal component of velocity. So we'll call that v naught sub x is just going to be 20.2 times what? Sine or cosine? Cosine. Cosine, cosine. cosine of theta. Okay, the vertical component, so v naught sub y, is 20.2 sine. sine. 
theta, right? Okay, so we could go up to our list then and we could add those. So we know vertically we end up with V naught sub y equals 20.2 sine theta. There's one other thing we know for both horizontal and vertical. What's that? Time. Time. Yeah, right. We also know that they're that oops, they share they share a common time of 5.60. So that goes into both columns. Right? What do we know horizontally? Really just one thing. Yeah, we just know the initial velocity. So the initial velocity in the x direction is 20.2 cosine theta. Okay, so now what are we trying to find here? There's some stuff we're trying to find. Well, we want to find theta. That's our only unknown in this whole part over here. So what's the, what's the relationship that we could use to write an equation with only a theta as an unknown? Could you use the uh, third? Yeah, the, the third one, right? The displacement one. Okay, so that's going to be the equation delta y equals v naught sub y times t plus one half a sub y t squared, right? If we plug in our specifics for that, that becomes, let me carve out a little space here. Right? So that becomes delta y is negative 60.9 v naught sub y is 20.2 sine theta times t, but we know what t is, right? Everybody agree? Okay. Times, what was t? 5.60 plus 1 half times a. Well, that's just going to be minus, isn't that just negative 4.9, right? times t squared. Well, the only unknown in that whole thing is right there, right? So all I would have to do is just isolate that theta. So what are the steps to isolate that theta? <clears throat> okay, so whatever this term is, I gotta move that over there, right? Okay, so we end up with, um, so we end up here with what is, that's a number. We'll just get a determinating decimal. So somebody, what is that? What's 4.9 times 5.6 squared? Okay, 0. 0.64. Does it, does it repeat a whole bunch or something? Shouldn't, yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's, let's, so let's add that to negative 60.9. Okay, so I get negative 92 point. Oh, should be positive. Yeah, should be positive. Positive 92.764 equals, terminating decimal, equals 20.2 times sine. Oh, actually, 20.2 times 5.6. What's that? Let's turn that into one number. 113.12. 113, okay, 113.12, that's it, 113.12, okay, unrounded, good, okay, times sine theta, so now, how do we, and this is, this, this is a pretty hard problem, I mean, you're having to do some, you have to solve a trig equation, so if you haven't been in trig before, this is, this is a little bit challenging. I mean, I would never make this worth a lot of points. But here's, if you haven't been in trig, here's kind of how you have to look at this. And maybe if you have been in trig, here's a quick review. If I want to solve for an angle, what I have to do first is isolate the trig function, right? So I got to get the trig function by itself by dividing each side 
by 113.12. Okay, now I got the sine theta by itself. And everybody knows this. How do I undo a sine theta? Arc sine. Arc sine. Good. So our answer then is just going to be theta equals arc sine of that number. 92.764 over 113.12. And what do we get if we're in degrees mode? Can we do that? Zero. Zero. Yeah, what is it? 65.55. Whoops. 55.0897. Okay. Okay, so there it is. Now, we would only take that to how many places? Three. I think. Three. 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 Yeah, so it'd be, so we'd have 55.1 degrees, right? Okay, that's the angle relative to the horizontal. Okay. Okay. Uh, what about the other questions then? So that's the angle. That's the hard part, right? The stone hits the ground. How many meters from the base of the cliff? That's going to be pretty simple, right? Right? Because once I know what theta is, I can find out what the horizontal component of the velocity is, and that's constant, right? So all I'd have to do here, if I want to find delta x, yeah, right, is just right, is just plug in theta. So I'm just gonna, it's just gonna be v naught sub x times t, both of which I know or can calculate, right? Because I have theta, piece of cake. If I want to know how fast the stone hits the ground, I can do that too. Then I would just need to know what the final velocity components are. What's the vertical component and the horizontal component? Well, the horizontal component stays the same, right? Vertical component would just mean that we would have to add another line to our table over here, right? We're just trying to solve for what is v sub y. How could I do that? Yeah, I could plug in theta to get this, right? Okay. And then don't, don't, I mean, we have a, we have a we have a calculator number for theta that's effectively hasn't been rounded, right? It really has, but it goes out to like 20 places. So it's effectively, as far as we're concerned with for the physics, it's fine. I mean, any place it's been rounded is going to be absolutely insignificant when we're only keeping three sig figs, right? So that's why we keep those calculator numbers. So we've got we could fill in the blank for what v naught sub y is, right? Get an answer. And then to find v sub y, I could just use equation 2, couldn't I? Right? I could just use v, v sub y just equals v naught sub y plus a sub y t, right? And once I know what v sub y is, what's this picture going to look like? When it hits the ground, what's going on? Well, when it hits the ground, it's going to have some final velocity that looks like that, right? When it hits the ground. That's just going to be a composition of a vertical velocity and a horizontal velocity, which I could just add up tip to tail using Pythagorean theorem, right? And so I'm just going to use this result and that result to find out what the result, the final result it is, right? Know what the magnet? All we want is speed too, so we just want the magnitude of that. They don't ask for the direction. I don't think, do they? Do I? I guess I wrote speed. So we just want to know what the length of that is, right? Okay. That's pretty challenging. I'm just gonna leave it at that. You can take it from there on that one. That's by far the hardest question. That will ever do. Not that you'll ever do, but you'll do on this side. That is one of the harder questions you would do, though, in, the, in this class.